Demons are evil spirits and fallen angels who act on Satan's behalf. Though most portrayals of the devil and his demons are more figurative than biblical, demons are very real and very powerful forces who stand in opposition to the kingdom of God and engage in spiritual warfare against Christ's followers. But what do demons actually look like? Hello, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar. Welcome to The Church of the Undead. If you listen to my podcast, Weird Darkness, then you, just like me, love creepy stuff. Stories about ghosts, unsolved mysteries, unexplained disappearances, true crime, aliens, cryptids, etc. And at the same time, I also love God, and sometimes my love for Him and my love for the macabre interact or even collide. And that's why I created The Church of the Undead. This is also a place where I can share episodes not related to Weird Darkness which are relevant to those who suffer with depression, need some encouragement, or for those who love or are curious about the God of the Bible. It doesn't matter if you are a weirdo in Christ or just a weirdo. Everybody's welcome here at the Church of the Undead. And I use the word undead because, as Romans 6.11 says, in the same way count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Full disclosure, I might use the term pastor because I've branded this feature as a church, but I do not have a theology degree, nor did I ever go to Bible college. I'm just a guy who gave his life to Christ in 1989 and has tried to walk the walk ever since, and has stumbled a lot along the way. Because, well, like everybody else, I am an imperfect, heavily flawed human being. So please don't take what I say as gospel. Dig into God's Word yourself for confirmation inspiration, and revelation. That being said, welcome to the Church of the Undead. Demons, like the devil, have been depicted in art, literature, movies, television, and video games for centuries. Oddly enough, even the unbelieving world has been fascinated by stories of the supernatural, whether they believe in the existence of actual demons or not. Are these stories and depictions biblically accurate? Well, yes and no. It's important to remember that demons are not physical beings, so any attempt to describe their physical appearance is going to be inadequate at best. That's not to say that demonic manifestations can't be physical or powerful. Many stories of real-life encounters with the demonic have horrified humans for generations, and rightly so. Demons operate in the spiritual realm, but attack regular people's minds, bodies, and emotions all the time. However, most portrayals of the demonic in books and movies, though they do contain some truth, are more imaginative and fantastical than actually biblical. For example, most people tend to think of demons as fiery, cartoonish creatures with horns, forked tails and claws flying around, whispering in people's ears, and otherwise tormenting people. Some depictions portray demons as more ancient mythological creatures, such as the Balrogs of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Fellowship of the Ring or Seven Deadly Sins in DC Comics' Shazam. Medieval paintings used to envision fallen angels as nightmarish, ghoulish creatures preying upon the innocent. Entire comic books, graphic novels, and television series have been dedicated to the demonic and the supernatural, for example, CW's Supernatural. Some have even turned Lucifer and his demons into main characters or heroes. Dark Horse Comics has Hellboy, Mike Carey has Lucifer, Marvel Comics has Ghost Rider. Even children's cartoons have explored the supernatural, portraying demons as slightly smaller and even comedic minions of Satan. Some have taken a more ethereal approach to demons, as spirits of the other side, for example in Disney's The Princess and the Frog. In Dante's 14th century epic poem, The Inferno, The Divine Comedy, demons are described as residents of the lowest circles of hell who exist to torment corrupt politicians and those who engaged in willful acts of deception in life. In the Screwtape Letters, my personal favorite book of all time, by the way, renowned apologist C.S. Lewis wrote a series of fictional letters between Screwtape, a senior demon of hell, and his aspiring nephew, Wormwood, on how to effectively tempt and corrupt human subjects. Portrayals of the demonic 
have also been packaged and concealed in various forms of witchcraft, voodoo, sorcery, and the occult practiced in many parts of the world today. Of course, most overt forms of demonic influence and possession have been the subject of horror movies like The Exorcist, Poltergeist, Insidious, Hereditary, and The Conjuring, just to name a few. Needless to say, demons are represented almost everywhere in pop culture. Though most depictions of demons are fictional representations of non-physical beings, the one thing that they often do get right is the truly perverse and pervasive nature of evil and Satan's influence in the world. Where demons go, deception, division, and death are usually not far behind. But what does the Bible have to say about demons? And why is the biblical understanding of the supernatural far more powerful than anything we might find in a horror movie or a graphic novel? The Bible tells us that demons are former angels who were cast out of heaven with their master before the creation of the world. Jude 1 verse 6, And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting change for judgment on the great day. 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. Demons are not physical in the traditional sense. They operate in the spiritual realm, searching for humans that they can distract, deceive, and ultimately separate from the knowledge, love, and grace of Jesus Christ. That is their sole objective. John's Gospel describes the prince of all demons, Satan, as a thief who comes only to steal and kill and destroy. His demons are commissioned to do this work. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3-5, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying arguments and all arrogance raised against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Satan's demons wage war in the mind of humans, seeking to disrupt, distract, and distort an individual's thoughts and understanding of God. This is why Paul emphasized the need for Christians in Ephesians 6:16 6, to take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Demons often target the mind. Even though demons are not physical beings, their influence over humans can manifest itself in physical and sometimes emotional ways. These manifestations may not be as graphic as what's portrayed in The Exorcist. Negative thoughts, anxiety, confusion, nightmares, sudden death, and sometimes physical ailments can be signs of demonic forces attempting to disrupt and divert those that Satan recognizes are vulnerable or perceives as a threat. It's important to remember, though, that many physical ailments and mental issues are just that – physical ailments and mental issues. It'd be unwise to label something as demonic when it's not. This is why spiritual discernment coupled with prayer and fasting, is required to correctly identify the presence of the demonic and deal with it according to Scripture. Christ's followers are called to be alert, aware of Satan's schemes, and prepared to wage war in the Spirit at all times. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The ultimate example of demons, though, is found in the ministry of Jesus Christ. In the Gospels, Jesus had frequent encounters with the demonic. Here are just a few of them. Matthew 4.24 News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Matthew 9 verses 32-34 while they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus, and when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. Matthew 12 Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? In Matthew chapter 17 when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. 
he often falls into the fire or into the water. Jesus told him, Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. Luke chapter 4. At sunset the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Messiah. Those under demonic influence would often become violent or physically impaired as a result of demonic oppression, and in these cases Jesus had compassion for the individual, seeking to deliver those from sin and spiritual bondage. We read in the Bible that multiple demons can cling to one individual, like in Mark chapter 5, verse 9. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. We also see in the Bible that demons can torment animals and other creatures. In Luke chapter 8, Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. Demons can even influence Christians or those formerly of Christ when unforgiveness and willful acts of sin and disobedience are present. Luke 22, verse 3, talks about Judas, one of the twelve disciples. It says, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. Unclean spirits, that is, demons, may also look to return to the places and people that they've been cast out of. Matthew chapter 12, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places, seeking rest, and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. Fortunately, the Bible also says that demons shudder at the very name of Jesus Christ. James 2, verse 19, You believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that, and shudder. Furthermore, Jesus gave his disciples and followers authority in his name to cast out demons and deliver those who seek to be free. In Mark chapter 16, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Of course, demons are not the only spiritual beings presented in pop culture. They're not even the most powerful forces of evil at work in the world. That title is reserved for their master, the father of lies, evil one, tempter, and ruler of this age. We know him as the devil, or Satan, a once glorious angel who rebelled against God and was cast from heaven. Revelation 12, verses 7-9 through 9. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Satan is a liar, a tempter, a deceiver, and one who attempts to exalt and magnify himself above God and the world. We know from Scripture that in the end times he'll also present himself as God to the world, causing many Christians to fall away from the faith by deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2, the Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. Where Satan is at work, there is lawlessness, confusion, spiritual blindness, rebellion, division, and the perversion of God's commands and promises. Furthermore, Satan's rule is described as one of death and darkness, and his domain in hell is portrayed as a blazing furnace 
where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Matthew 8.12, But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Isaiah 5, verse 20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Like his demons, the prince of darkness is not a physical being. Though we don't know what Satan or any of God's angels truly look like, we do know that Satan was once a glorious and perhaps beautiful creature. His true physical nature, however, is a mystery to us. And yet the Bible does use metaphors and figurative language to describe Satan's spiritual nature and behavior. In the Bible, he's portrayed as a crafty and deceptive servant, as in Genesis and Revelation, a roaring lion seeking those he might devour in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, a dragon in the book of Revelation, a great beast with horns in both Revelation and the book of Daniel. He's also called Beelzebul, the Lord of Flies, and the Prince of Demons in Luke chapter 11. These descriptions have no doubt inspired many fictional representations of Satan as either a red-caped, pitchforked devil sitting on Donald Duck's shoulder or a monster of pure evil in the vein of Fantasia's Chernobog. Fictional villains like Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, Emperor Palpatine in the Star Wars movies, Mr. Hyde in The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Joker from the Batman universe, or Nurse Ratched from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, they're not direct parallels to the evil one described in the Bible, but they do model some similar traits of death, destruction, deception, and menace in their respective tales. Of course, many modern adaptations of Satan have presented a more smooth-talking, intelligent figure, one who's more attractive than overtly evil. His true sinister nature is concealed beneath his immense charm. Ironically, this view of Satan might be more in line with the actual truth, which Paul writes about. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Demons no doubt take after their master in this regard. After all, an enemy who masks his true nature and presents himself as good-natured will often be more effective at winning souls to his cause than a pitched-forked baddie who announces himself as evil, explains his plan, or reveals the consequences that await those who partake of his offerings. Satan and his demons are far more crafty and deceptive in how they go about their business. Thankfully, the Bible makes clear that Satan's power has been countered and overcome by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Those who are in Christ are given new eyes to see Satan's schemes for what they are, the truth of God's word to counter Satan's lies, and the power to overcome sin in their lives. Satan and his demons, they might have influence over the earth for a time, but we know that one day Satan and all his forces will be cast into the lake of fire and banished forever. Revelation 20 verse 10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown, they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And as was promised in Romans 16, verse 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Though many fictional representations present Satan and his demons as rivals to God, the Bible reminds us that God has no equal in heaven or on earth, which you can read about in Isaiah chapter 40. Demons are powerful forces that should be taken seriously. However, even they are no match for God's perfect love and light made available to you. 1 John 4, verse 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So you have nothing to worry about so long as you're one of his followers. For the name of Jesus Christ is a name above all names, above all powers, and above all forces of darkness now and forever. As it says in Ephesians 1 verse 21, Jesus is far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come.
This episode of Church of the Undead was adapted from the Crosswalk.com article, What Do Demons Look Like?, by Joel Ryan. You can find a link to the original article in the show notes. If you like what you just heard, you'll want to subscribe to the Church of the Undead podcast, which is a separate podcast from Weird Darkness. The Church of the Undead has weekday short devotionals called Lifelines, weekly uplifting messages called Power Charges, and of course the Church of the Undead messages, which come out every Sunday and sometimes on Wednesdays, too. And please share this episode with others whom you think might also like it. Maybe the person you share it with will want to become a weirdo in Christ, too. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find all of my social media, postal address, and other contact info at WeirdDarkness.com. That's also where you can find the daily Weird Darkness podcast if you like creepy true stories of the paranormal, unexplained, true crime, and all things strange and macabre. And you can also find the Church of the Undead there as well. I'm Darren Marlin. Thanks for joining me, weirdos. And until next time, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless.